Welcome to you all. I'm Kate. Clifton is the other pianist, and Clive is our conductor. This is an exciting event, and it's all about celebrating the life of an exceptional, very special man. The thing is, we've been engrossed in our music today, so we haven't had time to think about John. But I want us to do that tonight as well, because it's why we're, we're singing this and taking part in this wonderful work. John's aim in life was to share his love of music with as many people as possible. John adored Carmina Burana, and I know that many of you have sung it with him. I've played it with him as well. And so I feel it's very fitting to perform it tonight in his memory. First of all, just a few housekeeping notes, and then Clive and I are going to just say a little bit about John and our lives together and to draw you in to John. So please turn off your mobiles. The exit doors are here. I'm not sure if we can get up there. We should be able to get up there, but I'm sure that'll do because we're not going to have a fire, are we, tonight? <laughs> um, we'll be selling CDs of John and me playing three hands at one piano if you want to buy them. They're, they're £10. Um, so now I have great pleasure in ha handing over to Clive, who's going to talk to you about his friendship with John, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about me and John as well. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's a great pleasure to be here tonight. It's a great pleasure to see so many people. I mean, I'm, I'm meeting people who I haven't seen for a rather long time, which is, which is great fun. Um, John had an enormously eventful life, um, and as you know, he loved music and he loved fun. Working with John was always fun. Um, he was one of the most positive people you could possibly know, and he was one who saw the best in situations. And one, of course, who at the most critical point in his life, I think in his 20s, had his arm amputated. Was it in his 20s? Yeah. And for most people, that would just destroy them, wouldn't it? And yet for John, he uh, got through that, and he, he was able to go on conducting choirs, conducting <laughs> orchestras, playing the piano, and just sorting it all out, and was able to get over that, and which was quite a remarkable thing. I mean, those of us who worked with him, we, he never ever seemed to come and say, "Could you help me with this?" Because you know, I have a handicap. But that was never there, and you always forgot that he had the handicap. Um, you remember? Well, some of you remember him playing the Ravel Concerto for the left hand, which he played with his right hand. You think about the sort of technical. Uh, achievement of that, it's absolutely enormous. And of course he, he arranged a large amount of music to play on the, uh, with, with just his right hand. He had a whole program, Gershwin, of Bach and so on, a very varied program, um, which he played and many of us enjoyed very much. I, I first saw John when I was a student at the London Institute of Education and we went as students to Ealing Grammar School and there was John conducting our lovely inside dwelling from Brahms Requiem. And of course, you know, just his, his, his closeness to the music and to the performers was, was immediately obvious. Um, and uh, not long after that, when I, I was in Luton, actually, uh, organist of the parish church and uh, earning a bit of extra pin money, working in a little primary school, doing music one morning a week. And the music advisor for North Hartford was John Railton. Uh, and he appeared to uh, view what I was doing, and he was immediately enormously encouraging, so, so encouraging that I found I was spending the whole week going to different primary schools all around North Hertfordshire, and coming to Highbury House and doing things on a Friday afternoon with the students who were here. And, and, and that was all very exciting, because um, working with John was always very rewarding because um, he produced these amazing results, both in vocal and instrumental music, and he was so refreshingly open to suggestions, and always very positive about initiatives. Um, he loved exploring new rep repertoire. He always commanded great respect from everyone who worked with him. I remember sitting with students in Highbury House and in the college, and we were doing improvisations and things, and John would come and sit on the floor and grab things and be part of the improvisation. He would just join into the whole thing, and he would love it, and always be so encouraging about it. He was a colleague of mine as an ABRSM, we're supposed to call it, you know what it is, Associated Board Examiner. And I spent times with him in Malaysia, 
Um, and in a wonderful hotel called the Eastern Orient Hotel in Penang, maybe some of you know it. And we were examining in adjacent rooms, and it was a typically sort of boring afternoon, no, no great stars, and uh, we, we, uh, suddenly the door of John's room burst open, and he went out on the terrace of the hotel, which was a beautiful grass terrace with coconut trees and, and uh, swimming pools and everybody lying, uh, lying there. He was in the middle of a grade 8 exam, somebody was playing the slow movement of a Beethoven sonata, and he'd been extremely irritated by the crows in the coconut trees making the noise that he made. <laughs> So he went out on the terrace, took his shoe off, threw it up into the coconut tree, and then turned around and went back and carried on with the exam. <laughs> I didn't know that he had his shoe when he returned, but I always remember that. And while we were there examining, he, he, uh, the Comtar Tower, in the middle of Penang, there was an enormous skyscraper tower, and I found out that in the middle of that there was a, a, a concert hall which would seat a hundred people and had a piano. So he said, John, you must do your recital, you must get a recital. And he said he would. So we stuck notices up outside the exam rooms, and the recital was just packed out with the candidates and their parents um, for, for, from that week's exams. And it was just a wonderful occasion. And on the morning, pinned to the door of the exam, was a limerick. When John came to work in Penang, he joined a salubrious gang. He gave a recital, five fingers all vital, and oh, how that concert tower rang. <laughs> and actually, uh, that, that little limerick led to a whole series of limericks between our Muslim students, who we all thought were extremely serious, but did actually start smiling on this occasion. And they, they uh, were, were writing limericks to John, he was writing limericks back. And eventually John had a big book outside, and he said he wanted all the candidates to write a little comment to him when they finished their exam. Now, of course, <laughs> this doesn't happen now because we have to be very serious people if we're associated with the exam. <laughs> we're not allowed to do these sort of fun things. But John did, and as always, John does the things that nobody else is allowed to do. Uh, one morning in the hotel, John was slightly distracted and he went back to his room. But for somebody, he got the wrong floor. So he went into the right room on the wrong floor, somehow his key opened the door, and he was amazed to see two people in bed. <laughs> so he appeared for the exams totally shocked, and it took him the whole day to get over this. He couldn't work out how it had been possible. <laughs> well, I worked at Hitchin College with John for about five years, and of course it's just so impressive to see what he does and how he encouraged people who, who, you know, were good musicians but they'd had a bad time for some reasons. They come from school, schools where the music wasn't very good, they uh, were in situations where people hadn't either been able to find good teachers for them or afford good teachers for them and John was always the person who would find the person with the, with the talent and would do everything he could to encourage them and make it possible for them to achieve things. And this was such a wonderful quality in him. And so uh, he, he achieved in that little group, about 30 of us, weren't there? Something probably a little bit more. He achieved most remarkable things in terms of choirs, orchestras, and things like improvisation and so on, which were great fun. And we all used to do those things together. So, I mean, you all know he achieved such enormously... Uh, impressive things in Hitchin, in the Ealing Youth Orchestra, the Ernest Reed concerts and so on. And so it's only fitting that tonight we're here to remember him. And uh, uh, the quality of our performances is not perfect because we've only actually been doing it for the last couple of hours. But we hope you accept it in the spirit that it's meant. It's a fun evening in music, which is, I think, what uh, sort of thing John used to feel, feel, feel as part of it. speech um, of Clyde, and, and so uh, for the first 40 years of my life I was quite happy teaching in Bushy and Watford area, and then one of my first piano pupils, Penny Lazenby, who happens to be here tonight, who was head of music at um, Watford Girls Grammar School, she inveigled me to come over to Hitchin to take evening classes, 
And then subsequently I was asked if I could stay and do quite a few days worth of stuff over here. So I was doing accompanying very talented students, um, taking classes in theory, in harmony, in piano, you name it, I was doing it. This is John. He used to say to me, get on with it. That's his favourite phrase. And that's pathetic. Do you remember that phrase he would say? That's pathetic. Get on with it. And so I managed, I tried to get on with it. I mean, I, I didn't pass the test to be an associated board the first time. And I said to him when I came over, oh no, that I afraid I failed. He said, what on earth are you talking about? Get on with it and do it again. He said, I'll back you up. And he did, and of course on a, then I was on the Associated Board examiner for about 12 years, 15 years, I don't know. The same with adjudicating. Oh, I don't know whether I should do that. Of course you should. Penny was another one, Penny Lazenby. She would push me to do things that I didn't think I could do, but there we are. We get on with it, don't we? Um, so anyway, when I came over here, someone, and we think it might have been Liz Rowton, his wife, suggested that John and I got on so well that we should play together. Two, um, or two pianos or one piano. We played three hands. Now, we used to arrange our own music. We liked to do that because that way we would cover all of the notes. We hardly ever left a note out of a four, the four hand repertoire. And we did um, a lot of concerts together. We traveled to a lot of schools, um, a lot of primary schools in this country. And um, one day, John rang me up from Malaysia. I think it must have been on this set tour. And, um, um, what was it? Um, oh yes, will you pay for this call from Malaysia? And I thought, oh my God, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so, I think you should come out next week because I've got a school interested in hearing this play. So, oh God. Um, so anyway, I packed the bags, and of course one does what John says one should do. So I went out there, and, and I remember that we were standing, um, I can't remember where it was, Singapore or somewhere, and I said, well, what do I wear for this school concert? And I'd just been down to the market and I bought a beautiful sundress with little bows at the top here and flip flops. And he looked me up and down and he said, that would be fine. So we go to the school, of course, we go in and you know what the Chinese kids are like? Dressed up to the, you know, beautiful pleated skirts, white blouses. And there were about 1,500 of them sitting round in this enormous theatre. And I swear it was about two miles to the piano. And there was me in his flip flop, so I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, we started to have music written for us, which was lovely. I don't know whether any of you will remember Michael Easton, who was one of his students here. He wrote music for John and myself, and then he arranged a tour for us to go to Southern Australia. So we travelled all along the Arts Council groups, all the arts clubs, and finished up with a television programme in Sydney. That was a tremendous experience. And then we got Paul Drayton to write some music for us. Um, he wrote a gorgeous piece for one piano called um, Dr. Pretorius's Frolic, which is quite witty. Um, if you've met, met Paul Drayton's music, you will know. And then he also wrote a, a piece called The Carnival of the Insects, which is a companion piece of the Carnival of the Animals. <laughs> very, very effective. And the same um, use of the instrument. So we had great fun touring around with that. I remember going to Festival Hall, and we hired the boys' school at Hitchin. Some of you may well have been to those concerts, I don't know. Um, so we've done a lot of things together. Um, he was a great pal. Um, I was just going to tell you um, a funny thing that we did. Um, we were playing at a serious two piano recital, and we finished it with the Richard Monty Bennett Suite, which you probably know for two pianos. And the last item is rock. Uh, we pretended that we'd forgotten our music. So we said to the audience, terribly sorry, we're just going to have to go to the green room and get the music of this rock piece. And we, in the meantime, we borrowed some dreadful T-shirts of our pupils with sort of rock and sort of, you know, ridiculous things on. <laughs> and we put these on and we put balaclavas on our faces. <laughs> and then he kicked me literally onto the stage. Well, I stumbled and nearly fell because he, he's, you know, it's very, very strong. So anyway, we staggered to the piano and we got back and we managed to get through this piece, just showing, you know, that... You know, he had a tremendous sense of humour. And one other little thing I must mention to you about associated board exams, so you talking about the associated board. He said to me once, oh, I was doing a grade eight, but the girl was playing a Brahms violin and piano sonata. I stopped in the middle and said, hmm, would you like me to give you a lesson on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was done, wasn't it? <laughs> so anyway, 
I want you to, I want you to get this group together. I want you to, to do this as a tribute to a, a very, very marvelous man who was very dear to me, and I'm sure dear to many of you. So I hope you'll enjoy our tribute this evening.
Sweet. 